hello students uh, so today we will start our topic on one of the most important chapter of indirect tax and that is gst and some of its basic concepts uh, me utte basu assistant professor from brain university so before starting gst uh, we can say that uh, gst is an indirect tax uh, means or we can see it's in consumption tax which used in india on the supply of goods and services so uh, it is contingency uh, a multi stage destination based tax contingency because it has uh, subsumed almost all the indirect taxes previously like the vat uh, the service tax the excise and etc and uh, it was the tax came into effect on 1st july of 2017 uh, through the implementation of the 101st amendment of the constitution of india by the indian government uh so gst replaced existing multiple taxes defeated by the central and state governments now what are the necessity for the gst uh the present system of indirect tax has a multiplicity of taxes defeated by the central and the state that uh, means uh, that we had like the the vat the excise the customs and the vat rate was different from the states and so uh, so it was actually the cascading effect of the tax and so on on a single product or service we are actually implementing the different uh, type of tax on different areas on different states and for different reasons so um, actually it was actually have uh, hampered the the tax system mostly on the consumers so there was no inform uniformity of the tax rates uh, always there was always confusion on when to pay and what to pay and why to pay uh, so 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 much of the compliance and administration cost was also included there uh, there were luxury tax the sat credit the cst so all these things were very much complicated so uh, to get rid of this uh, gst was gst the implementation of gst was very much important so after the gst implementation is the in the gst design the things are getting more easier uh, i will not say that gst payment or the, all the all the, uh, the small business bodies are uh, getting it very easier to implement or very easier to pay the tax but those cascading effects and uh, on all those um, uh, economical reasons uh, are now gone so gst is very much necessity and it is making a good effect on the country and uh, hopes uh, in the coming 5 or 10 years we will see a, a long run effect of the gst now how it, it, it actually helps india the, after the gst design uh, we can see that the gdp grow, growth got up to rupees 2 2 and 2 to 4% so it's not only the gdp so there are very obvious other reasons uh, made the gdp rate but uh, still we can see that uh, gst is playing a main important role in the, the increasing of the gst and obviously the international competitiveness is increased by 5 to 8% the foreign direct investment is already means good in the last couple of years and all those uh, means uh, the lower transaction cost and the uh, easier tax payments and the increase in idt and direct as revenue so everything is coming together and helping india uh, from the economical point of view so it, it's all together it's a good effect a positive effect on india on a country now from this screen uh, we can see uh, we can we can make a difference the non gst design means the previous to the vat excise and the service tax uh, scenario and the gst scenario so look at the left side uh, we can see the suppose a manufacturer is manufacturing a product for rupees 100 and when he is going to sell that product to the distributor uh, so after the manufacturing we all know there was excise duty uh, i suppose excise duty is 10% uh, that is rupees 10 and when because he is selling the product and it is actually comes under the vat design so the vat will be i, I suppose it is 5% so 100 plus 10 plus 5 is 115 is the selling price of the manufacturer and the cost cost price of the distributor now when the distributor is selling the same product to the retailer uh, suppose i suppose there was a profit margin of 150 in the 20% so 1/5 of uh, 115 will be rupees 23 once again there will be vat 7 rupees 5% so 115 plus 23 plus 7 he is selling the product to the retailer uh, on 167 also it includes the service tax 
means it's a size it's a such a kind of product i assume that where uh, we are implementing both the vat and there are some service items and included there so that is service tax 15% so uh, 115 plus 23 plus 7 plus 22 goes to 167 which is the actual uh, purchase price of the retailer now in the retailer means the end chain holder is actually getting the product to the uh, consumer one second he is getting the profit of one fifth uh, then VAT 5%, then one second service tax 15%. So ultimately, the consumer is getting their product on rupees 242. So that is actually the cost price of the consumer. So now think about the price of the manufacturer when we produce that product and look at the price of the consumer value, how much he is paying to get the product. So it's almost 150%. So rupees 100 was manufacturer's cost and the purchase price of the consumer is 242. Now look at what is happening now in the GST design. The same, the manufacturer product cost is rupees 100. Uh, we are assuming GST is 10%, uh, so there is no excise and no VAT. So we say in the product on rupees 110 to the distributor, the cost price. Then when the distributor is selling the product to the retailer, uh, we have assumed the same profit margin, means the 20%, GST is 20%. So now it's 20% profit margin rupees 22, and the same GST is 10%, rupees 13. So we're selling the product to the distributor, um, uh, to the retailer, I mean, in rupees 145. Now, uh, look at the difference there. In the very first stage, it was equal 110. In the second stage, it's less 15 rupees. And in the third stage, it's just 22 rupees. Now, finally, the end chain holder retailer is selling that product to the customer. Once again, the profit margin rupees to 29% is to 29 rupees and GST 10% 32. So he's selling that product to the customer with the rupees 199. So in the last uh, column, the difference is almost to be 51. Yes, 51. 240 to minus 190 minus 51. So actually, customer is paying almost the 50 rupees lesser in than, than the GST, non GST design. So from this scenario, you can see easily, I mean, actually, easily the uh, who is getting more uh, advantage means the consumer. We people are giving, giving less money to get the product. Previously, we were giving almost the 150% of the manufactured cost of the product. So this is how actually the GST is giving help to not only the individual customers, but also the different uh, business bodies. So the GST is actually the supply of goods and services. It's the distribution based tax. So this is global integration. So it's not only, it's not like that previously that from where we are uh, servicing the product, from where we are selling the product, is actually where we are selling the product, is it the destination. Now goods means every kind of movable property other than money and securities. And services means anything other than the goods. Thus GST has a wider coverage and merges 11 taxes. In, from the previous design, it merged 11 taxes within it. Now there are three types of GST. Uh, we can say it's a dual GST model. Uh, which is also the federal structure with the CGST and the SGST. The full form of CGST is the central goods and service tax, which is a part of the revenue of the central, uh, central government. And the second thing is SGST in the state government. The international GST was first introduced in France and now more than 160 countries have introduced the GST. Now these are the principles of GST. Means there should be levy and exemption, the time and place of supply, the types, the taxable person, the scope, then the value of the product, and the input credit, and the job of return. So let's start from the one. What is a levy? Levy uh, means it first start with the goods. It means every kind of movable property and includes actionable claim, excludes money and securities, and no specific exclusion for intangible property. And services means anything other than goods, includes transaction in money in relation to user conversion and it also includes money and securities. Now we are talking about the CGST and SGST. Now if it is a down the, if the product or the service uh, means uh, selling within the state then we will charge the CGST and SGST. So we can say if it is an interested supply of goods then we will charge the CGST and the SGST. So I am giving an example support the GST rate is 18 percent. So if we go to the KFC and we buy some product, um, so suppose the price is, cost price is 100, and if they charge the GST 18%, so it will be CGST 9% and SGST 9%, the equal, the total will be 18%, so we will pay 118 to the KFC, 
and the gifts will collect the money and they will send the money to the government and out of that 80 rupees 9 will be uh, in the uh, revenue of the uh, state and 9 will be revenue of the cent and igst mean integrated gst uh, it shall be levied on the interstate surplus of the goods and if we sell the product to the some different states from from west bengal to up jharkhand or bihar then will be charged the gst now then comes the composition levy it means it not applicable to the services uh, it will be 0.5 to 1% for the trade based students and 2.5% for the more now what is the reverse charge mechanism it means the goods and services particularly for non registered portion even those in threshold as they will not be registered so reverse charge mechanism I mean, is is applicable where where we are we are getting the product from the unregistered persons and we are selling it now we know that uh, when we are paying the gst there will be some input tax mechanism means uh, at the time of purchase whatever gst we are paying there is the input gst and at the time of sale whatever gst we are paying that is the output gst so the total gst payable will be the output gst minus the input gst so that reverse charge mechanism includes so those areas where we are getting the, the things from the unregistered persons so we have to calculate the uh, rate of gst the amount of gst on those uh, areas where uh, the normal GST prevails. Now that is the Levian calculation and calc I mean, I'm sorry, the Levian collection chart. So uh, it's always start with the services, goods and goods and services. Then we are coming to the supply portion. The supply means it should be included, implied and excluded portion in the place. Obviously there are two places, the interstate and the interstate and the time, the time was specific for the goods and specified for the services. Now, now we will come into the uh, Levian collection portion. So, we, from this chart, uh, we can we, we can see uh, there in the different types of goods. There are two there are two columns: I mean, the, the complete supply and the mimic supply. So, depending on the goods, uh, there are some areas where complete supply is applicable, and there are some areas on where complete supply is not applicable. Means the mimic supply is applicable. Uh, so we can see that uh, in case of industrial bundle goods or uh, supply separately, one is predominant supply for the recipient, another supply is any itself, and the last the three lines, the all suppliers are goods and all suppliers are services. And so in a nutshell, we can say the composite supply means a supply is comprising two or more goods and services uh, which are naturally bundled and supplied in with each other. In the ordinary course of business now one of which is a principal supply it means that the terms are generally sold as a combination and the items cannot be supplied separately so that is actually known as the composite supply so uh, from this uh, chart we can see that uh, the areas of the composite su supply where it is applicable and uh, talking about the mixed supply mixed supply among the gst means a combination of two or more goods and services made together for a, for a single price. So there is a clear difference between the uh, composite supply and the mixed supply. Now, when we are talking about the composite supply, we should know what is the composition levy is. Now, the composition levy is an alternative method of tax designed for small taxpayers mainly, and whose turnover is up to rupees 1.5 crore and pays a flat rate of tax regardless. Um, the, of what the manufacturer provide as a service or trade as they carry out. Now, as per the recent amendment of the CGST Act, a composition dealer can also supply services to an extent of 10% of the turnover or rupees 5 lakhs, whichever is higher. So, this amendment will be applicable from the 1st of 2019. Further, GST Council in 32nd meeting proposed that the limit will be maybe get increased. And, and the recent news, the CVIC has notified the increase of the threshold limit from 1 crore to 1.5 crore. So, so uh, that will give relief to some other small business organizations. Now, this is the uh, rules for the composition scheme. So, for the person who's in ticket turnover is not before or less than 50 lakhs in previous year and current year. So, there's really 1 crore was 2% and 1% for the traders and for the some suppliers, for the small suppliers is 5%. 5 now, this uh, this actually is for the 1 plus 1 in the CGST and IGST. So, this uh, it's a combination of both the GST. So, that's why these are like this. <coughs> I'm sorry. 
no for the composition it's not applicable for the b2b supplies it's all it's only applicable for the b2c supplies and no stock of goods procured in interstate to import person having business in different places and separately registered all of them should opt for the composition scheme a person cannot be in composition in one registration and outside in another registration so there should be a, a single composition scheme for an and for a single assessee and a taxable person who pays tax under composition levy shall not collect any tax from the recipient on supplies made by him or shall be entitled to any credit otherwise it will be punishable under the cgst act and the industry presentation needed made to ease some of these conditions to enable survival of the small businesses man without breaking the chain of the credit and there are some exemptions of it uh, some of some of them are limited to 10 lakhs and no credit without the exemptions and the very few exemptions like primary health the education the specific cereals so some on some public uh, services and in future we are expecting taxes on the textiles and the defense and maybe on the research and development also uh, so this portion has been already i have told that the types are cgst sgst and gst there is one more gst that is called utgst that is applicable for the union territory of the indian part like the kashmir the tatra daman and haveli and presently uh, the five bills have been prepared means starting from the exemption then the zero then the five then the 12 18 and 28 and uh, there are some central excise on tobacco state excise on liquor exports and milk liquor uh, milk is also uh, not applicable for the gst and still there is some central excise on the tobacco and state i don't know what will happen in the in the coming stages with the government will apply higher the higher slab gst on them or not now these are some these are advantages uh, we should we should know that in spite of uh, so much of positive parts of the gst there are some areas which are treated as a loopholes uh, so means the very first thing is the gst per cost means whatever business you are carrying you, you have to pay a gst in online or you have to uh, buy a software uh, for the gst payment or for the maintenance of the gst in every bill because uh, the, the rule is that in every month or every in the three months you have to submit all the bills along with the gst details so it is not only possible for any business organization to write this gst uh, in the, in handwritten procedure so you have to maintain some kind of software so that's a cost uh, then gst will mean an increase in the operational cost also um, you, see, you you need a professional to maintain the gst and in 2017 gst came in the middle of the year so that hampered the total financial procedure of the in 2017 but that portion is history so now that that can be a noted disadvantage now and it's totally an online tax system which sometimes uh, is very much uh, complex for the small business organization and also for the bus big, big business bodies and um, where all those forms and the uh, uh, receipts and uh, kind of challans are not always a downloadable and people always are facing problems to the upload the challans and making the bill payment and making the online returns and obviously the smes are you know, have a higher tax burden after the implementation of the gst so down the line we can say well, the gst is good for our country but still there are there are some loopholes which should be uh, which should be covered up by the government in the coming stages so now coming into the conclusion uh, changes is definitely never easy the government is trying to smooth in the route of the gst it is important to take a leaf from, from global economies that have implemented gst before us there are a lot of countries where implement the gst they have they face the same problems and now they are the they are the first world countries that means their economy is very strong after the implementation of the gst uh, and so the experience the advantages of having a unified tax system and easy import credits so at the end of the day it's good for us uh, yeah we are facing the problems not us means they're not the consumers with the business bodies are facing the problems uh, but so still we are hoping that uh, the government uh, are taking a lot of steps a lot of educational programs a lot of um, uh, workshops are out there a lot of websites are out there a lot of free software are out there uh, to make the things easy so hope uh, the business bodies can overcome those um, problems and government will help us obviously so i think i have i have helped you to make clear some of the basic concepts of the gst so if you like you can subscribe my channel
from supporting bye bye thank you all